Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Hope you are all well and safe and having a great day. Uh, my day's shaping up pretty well. I'm working in my studio uh, that is now, I've now changed everything around. So it's the first time in it where I've been working uh, with this layout. I'm really loving it. Um, I've got a lot more space where I can sort of spread things out a bit. So I've got the camera further away so I can now use a decent camera to record the intros, which is really cool. So uh, dead happy about all of that. And uh, if you look at what I've been doing today, this is a really simple painting, but it's all about color theory. This video, I'm gonna introduce you to the very basics of color theory and show you how to take that theory and create your own um, color palettes to use within your paintings or for your paintings. So let's just get straight into it. Wow, colour. This is a massive subject. I, I'm not um, going to try and explain everything about colour, but I am going to give you quite a few um, principles of colour that you can then take and um, create your own colour schemes with. And I'm going to, later on in the video, when I've discussed all of the concepts, I am going to um, produce a painting with a color scheme that I'm going to make using some of the principles. So I hope it's going to give you a grounding in color if you are um, not that familiar with color theory. And this really is for absolute beginners, okay? So if you're really familiar with color, I'm sorry, uh, you might just want to skip to the painting bit. I don't know. But anyway, um, so color can be uh, it's got three elements to it really or a color has got three elements to it and the first one being you now what is you you is the um actual what you would probably think of as the color so if i go around the, the outside of this circle we've got a red well that's kind of a warm red let's go this way a little bit that's more like a, a poppy red and then we can go and we'll, we have oranges yellows so basically all of the colors that are represented or can be found in a rainbow are um, represented on this circle and that is the U. or I guess uh, pure chroma, the lack of black or white added, it's just the pure uh, color or pure pigment, let's call it the pigment, the pure pigment. So that is you. Right, so the next uh, value is luminosity. And you've probably seen sliders that are uh, HSL sliders in uh, apps, photo apps and painting apps and things. So luminosity, I've got it set at 50% and 50% is our pure color or um, pure chroma, lack of black and white. If we go uh, down the far end of the scale, go to um, zero, we get black. And if we come up to the other end, to um, 100% we get white and we can um, go obviously in between that we now have a tint that's with white added and we go the other way we get a shade so that's what's meant by luminance, the amount of black or white added to um, a color. So the next value sometimes gets a little bit confusing. I'm going to go back to a pure color again, paint that there. And this is saturation. So saturation is the um, amount of pigment within that 
color. So for example, um, if it's pure pigment, you've got pure color at 100%. As you start to take pigment out, the saturation of the color becomes less. So now we have See, there's less chroma in these. It's similar to a shade or a tint because we could have um, a luminance up to 100 and the saturation down to zero and get white. Or we could go the opposite way where we've got the um, luminance down to zero and the saturation down to zero. And we've got black, but we could also Wipe the saturation up and still have black. So there is a relationship there, but it's also adding less um, pigment into your other mixers. So you can get grays, subtle grays, as well as shades. These are more, I would call those shades, and these are uh, grays, and you can get some uh, with this uh, sort of sort of pinky red color we can get a warm gray and you can see that's a warm gray and if i change the color to blue and knock the saturation down put the luminance up a bit let's um let's down a little bit more That's a cool gray. A bit more saturation into it, a bit more color. There we go. That might, that's better. There's a cool gray. So warm gray, cool gray. So that's what the U luminance and saturation all mean. I hope that makes sense. Right. So now we can combine those range of colors to make color schemes. So the reason I picked um, art rage for this if I go to the color wheel and pop open uh, this little sort of folder icon or tray icon we can show complementary colors so uh, the first one I actually want to show you isn't on here because it doesn't need to be because it's what's called monochromatic now monochromatic uh, or all colors that are tints and shades of one color. So we can have blue, we can have lights, we can have grays. All colors that are picked from this square without adjusting this color slider are monochromatic. So you could make a color palette by selecting each of these colors and adding them to a sample like this and create a monochromatic color scheme like that there we go so that would be a monochromatic color scheme and you can do that with any um, color or you you want so you can do it with oranges be an orange mono, monochromatic scheme as long as you don't adjust this slider and you can do it with pinks and so on so that's monochromatic. So you can create a scheme of colors that are monochromatic. Now, the next one, I now pop open this little folder, show complementary colors. The one I want to look at is analogous. Now, analogous colors lie next to each other on the color wheel. And ArtRage has got this real cool feature that you can pick a color so i can pick a green here and then it will show you two analogous colors so i can pick 
the green, paint that on. Let's, let's make it a bit lighter. And then click on the little circles. You see that's yellow, that's, that's warmer. And then I can click on this side and get a cooler green. So those colors are analogous to each other, but you can play around with the illuminance and saturation and create a wide variety of colors you using um these analogous so these are still all um analogous but i'm just changing the luminance and the saturation have some light ones, dark, we can have some greys, almost neutral grey. If we go right to the side, they do become neutral. If you want a neutral grey, just keep your slider um, along those two bottom axes of that box, I suppose. So they are analogous colours because they're all based on those three. And again, you know, I can choose a red. Let's go to the pure color first and this analogous orange and magenta type color so they're analogous as well and again i can have variations of that so analogous that's the second type of color scheme and you can produce um a color scheme using those greens and again, you can add them as uh, samples to a um, color picker to create a color scheme. So that would be analogous, okay? Now, moving on, um, it starts to get interesting now. Let's look at complementary. I'm going to clear my palette again. I'm using, by the way, I'm using an, a natural, a neutral gray. So basically I filled my canvas with a neutral gray by just moving the slider right down to the bottom there. And that gives me 50% um, <clears throat> luminance, no saturation. So that gives me a perfect neutral gray that uh, I can display these colors on. So just thought I'd point that out. So complementary then, I am going to be using um, complementary today in my actual um, painting, I think. So we have a green here. I, oops, let's get back to pure color. Got a nice green and then completely opposite on the color wheel, it's complementary color. Now I find this confusing because that is kind of a yellowy green. And really, I need to be more there. That's more how I understand um, a complementary green. In fact, I always thought, and I was when I was researching this, I was looking at uh, complementary colors that are, I suppose, green and red. And as a student, when I was mixing um, color or making color wheels and things, uh, I I would have mixed something. I would have done it something like this, maybe a green like that. And a red as 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 I uh, see maybe not the green's probably not quite that dark uh, that to me would have been um complementary colors but looking at the color wheel that's not so they are subtly it's not as straightforward as that there's subtle differences in the combinations so that's complementary, red and green, but I could use dark green there. Go back to this side. Oh, 
and use the same. And that's complementary as well. And I can use that, go back to the opposite side. And that's complementary. Um, I can do it with blues. Let's, let's choose blue and yellow. Blue and yellow, complementary. And um, go back to the blue, dark blue. That would be complementary. And if I have a light blue, you see, I'm always a bit, I'm not convinced these colors on this color wheel are absolutely bang on because that to me looks like it's got red in it. It's got this purple look to it. But when I come up to that down here, I'm not so sure. So it got the red in it. The that I suppose it has actually I can I can see it yeah perhaps anyway what I was going to do I was going to take the yellow and make that really dark and put that and that it technically is complementary because we've got the opposite colors but it's also what's called discordant because we've reversed the natural tonal order of the color in other words the lightest color becomes the darkest and the darkest becomes the lightest but i don't really want to get that deep into it i want to keep it a bit a bit more simple than that so um got the yellow and the blue there we go they're complementary so colors that lie opposite each other on the color wheel so let's clear this again so we have complementary colors analogous colors and monochromatic colors. And if you go to um, color, show complementary colors, we've got triadic, tetrad tetradic, and split complementary as well. Um, I don't want to go into them now because this is going to get really, really uh, deep. Well, not deep, but uh, it's going to be a really long video. If you'd like me to make another video, discussing those i will but i'm going to show you now how i am going to um produce a color scheme that i want to use today because it's all right knowing all this color theory but how do you put it into practice when you want to uh paint a picture so that's the tricky one isn't it that's kind of tricky so let's make a color scheme put the colors into uh the color samples up in the top right and then i will only use those colors to paint the picture but i will be able to change the saturation and the luminance of those colors so the first thing i want to do is pick um a complementary color two complementary colors you've got to have two colors for them to be complementary haven't you two colors that are complementary now i've got to think carefully about why use here um so i think go there that will give me yeah i'm going to choose yellow and the blue they are my complementary colors so at this point, I'm going to add the blue and I'm going to add the yellow to my samples. Okay, now I don't want to just paint with yellow and blue, I want to use a combination of color schemes. So I'm going to take my um, complementary colors and I'm going to use this feature in. Um, our age to pick analogous colors so along with the yellow I can add an orange because it's analogous to the yellow and I can add a green 
because it's analogous to the yellow. Now, going back to my original blue, I can add this kind of violet color and a blue green turquoisey color. So that is the color scheme that I'm going to use. I'm going to clear this now. And basically, I've got two analogous color schemes which are complementary to each other. And I'm also going to use, um, I think, the green. I'm not going to use it as a bright green. I'm going to use it as a really dark green. Do I like that color? Yeah. So I'm going to add that sample as well. So I've got a dark green in there. And um, the other colors, I will, I might make that violet dark as well. I think I want a dark version of that. Let's add that. But the other colors, um, I'll, I will mix using the sliders, okay? So I'm going to begin with um, this dark green because I, I, it's, this is going to be a really simple painting. It's nothing too sophisticated. I'm just going to paint a, um, a single tree on the horizon, but it's clearly quite close. Uh, in front of a, a field of corn. And I'm going to use some bright colours in this. I really am. Let's use my purple as well. And that, you can mix those on the canvas in Art Rage, which is nice. So that purple, if, I, if I'm, I can push it into the green, get a nice dark. There we go. And then I'm going to choose my yellow. And I want it a bit, a bit more, a bit lighter. Oh, look at that. You know, when you use a neutral gray, by the way, as a background, you really can judge your um, light values and dark values. Much easier. And then I'm going in with some bright yellow. Wow. And then some of the orange. I think I'm going to take the orange. Well, I'll put, put it in as pure color to start with. And then take that down to a, a more of a brown. And I like this. Um, It's cool blue for the sky. I'm not going to paint the old sky that blue. And I'm going to adjust the um, luminance. So basically what I've done, I've added white and a bit more white. There we go. I'm going to take some of this yellow. Um, cream, I'm going to um, take some of the saturation out. So we've got this sort of off color. It's not as bright. 
just to, just to put a few wispy clouds in there perhaps. Like that. I think I want to, I want to come further down with the yellow, you know. Oops. That's supposed to be the eraser. I don't know why it's not work, working as an eraser. So I will, uh, basically I just flip my stylus over then. Uh, expecting it to work as a eraser. Just going to take that out. Oh, it's still the eraser, isn't it? There you go. Bring this much further down. That's it. Otherwise, it was looking a bit like a sunset. I didn't want it to be a sunset. I wanted it to be a um, a cornfield. Some more of that wine to it. If I want to, with our rage, if I want to sort of get white over that, and it, oh, it did actually paint in there. I was going to say I could have created a new layer and added that a little bit. See, colours that are further away um, appear with less chroma. They're not as pure colour. Let's go in with this orange. And I can flick a few. I could pick the green up as well and bring that in, get some harmony while we've got that green repeating itself down here. That's why I put the yellow in the sky as well, really, to Add a little bit of uh, harmony there too. So as you can see, this is just a sort of a, a quick, a quick scribbly sketch, I guess. I don't know if I want this in dark. Yeah, that kind of works. The green, sort of a bit of a path that somebody's walked through the A. I kind of want the orange a bit lighter. Looking in here a bit. So hopefully you are seeing the relationship between um, the the actual color schemes, the monochromatic, not the monochromatic, the analogous, and the complementary colors, and also the way you can use the saturation and luminance to adjust the amount of uh, chroma or pure color you've got in your in your uh, on your brush and also the luminance the lightness and darkness of that color so you can get lighter and darker tones in there oops putting a few sky holes in I'm going to make it a half decent image if I can. And also, cool colours recede. They go further away. So uh, we could have put sort of a distant line of um, trees in here. And it's going to be difficult now because I've got this sort of bright blue sky. I could use, I suppose, of this blue. And we could, I haven't used this blue yet. Make it a uh, um, take the luminance down about 
Well, maybe about, let's try 86%. So we've got full saturation. Uh, maybe I might take the saturation down a little bit. Let's try that. Maybe even a bit. So you can add a line of distant trees in. So I'm using, and they don't have to be green, do they? You see. And that just adds a little bit of distance. So cool colors recede, warm colors like we've got down here, advance. There we go. So we've got some sort of distant tree line in there. And that's kind of, kind of what I wanted to show you really. Um, I hope you've, enjoyed this video it does get a bit complex at time color theory but it's uh, fun to analyze the reason i made this i'd, I'd done this painting and i really like the colors and i started to analyze what the color scheme was um why i'd picked uh, the colors i had and then i thought oh yeah that would make a really nice get some of this yellow uh, a really nice video um Giving you a little bit of colour theory. There we go. There. I could even pick this blue up and add a few wisps of that down here. So we're getting echoes of colour. Top and bottom. There we are. That's it. Uh, I'm leaving it at that. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up, as always, is much appreciated. Helps out the channel. Um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I've got loads of videos all about digital painting and uh, I was gonna say stuff like this, but uh, it's very rare. But this is the first time I've done a lesson on color theory. Uh, loads and loads of painting videos so anyway i'm rambling if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing i'd love to um be sharing all these videos that i'm making with you so hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye